Our last hour of the program this afternoon. Start of the final term, Pender and Ferguson. Ferguson gets it down, but only as far as Nick Lacino Throws the ball in the air and kicks it towards centre-half forward. Gibson can't take the mark. Tried to be tapped on by Kenyon towards Burke. He can't pick it up. Needs some help. Free kick Ooh. over the shoulder. Should be. And it will be a free kick at half forward. And it will be a free to... Uh, I think that might be Burke. But he's got it. And goes with a right boot. Just sets it up. Steenhouse is oh. there. Good mark. Damien Williams. Hasn't only just kept Tellerico quiet, but has uh, certainly defended stoutly at all times and gets the kick away towards the boundary line. And Ferguson, he takes the grab at half-back. The experienced players coming to the fore in this yeah, last quarter sure. already. So Ferguson now just holds the uh, the ball up. Goes with a right boot, tries to stab it. Oh, it's chopped off. And chopped off by uh, Kenyon again. Goes towards Hinkley at centre-half forward. Goes up, can't take the mark. Off hands, coming through the middle. Hockley, handball to Nick Lacino. Lacino, can he break a tackle? Yes, he can. He gets a kick high towards the top of the 10 metre square. Oh, there he is again, oh, Damien Williams. You read that well. And he's taken the mark. In the last line defence. Kicks it wide, looking for Shane Manning. Good kick too, and finds Manning at half back. And he switches play all towards Hodgson at half at centre half back, but the kick was over his head now. The uh, cheaters with the numbers, Lacino can turn around, go with the right boot. Oh, but it's all the Eagles there though. Chris Barnett takes the mark. He plays on quickly. Gets it towards Manning again. Has to sit and wait. Can he get around Williams? Yes, he can. He's handball though. Missed its target. Barnett's in there. He loses the football. Hammer. Stefanoski handball back out towards Manning. He's got a bit of time to set something up. Oh, poor kick though off the boot. McLeod. Oh, just oh. keeps it in. <laughs> well, he, everybody was waiting for the band umpire to blow a whistle, but she didn't. She said play on. Hardman at centre half back. Oh, good, good mark man. in front of Melville. And he plays on quickly. Handballs to Gibson. He's going to have to be quick. Hinkley came at him. He just got his kick away towards the middle of the ground. Murray over his head. Costanza waits for it. Purcell tried to tap it on. Buckingham. And also in there, Sam Lacino, who turns around, settles down. Oh, his oh. kicks get chopped off. Harbin got a hand to it. Couldn't take it with him. Kick off the ground by Ferguson. Back to wall, towards Sam Lacino. Still in the middle of the ground. Wants to switch play to Hinkley. Stefanovski in the middle of three cheaters, and he takes the mark. He read that well. <laughs> Stefanovski plays on quickly. Sees a lead coming up forward by Senjov. Oh, the bounce doesn't uh, suit Senjov. It's picked up there. Driven toward the boundary. Picking a footy up is Hodgson of East Geelong. Tries to get it to Senjov. He gets it further forward. Steinhaus gets it back to Stefanovski. Stefanovski handball, he missed it. And uh, the ball is forced over the boundary line adjacent to our broadcast position. A bit of pressure there, Welsh. Yeah, there was. And a uh, couple of... <coughs> Coughed the ball up a little bit. But uh, it's good to see the West boys are, are trying to fight on. So, ball thrown in. Ferguson gets a tap. Oh, good work, Hodgson. Ran onto the good footy. Tackle. Gets a handball back to Senjev. Senjev sees uh, Purcell. Oh, it's over his head. The ball's at half forward for East. Coming out to meet the footy is uh, Wilkie of uh, West Cricket, and he looks for the safety of the boundary line. Sort of uh, cleared the pack there. There wasn't any players coming towards yep. the football, and it was in no man's land. So it's probably a good decision from Wilkie. He's found the safety of the boundary. Half forward flank for East Geelong, kicking in this final quarter to the eastern end. We've been playing three minutes, final quarter. Ball thrown in. Nobody can come clear with the footy. Finally, it comes out to, uh, well... The umpire has said he can't go anywhere and wasn't going anywhere. So umpire Grossman will come in and uh, put the ball up. And uh, hasn't done a bad job out on the wing. That was McLeod, was it, that uh, yep. really got uh, wrapped up. Big pack of players around the footy. Murray almost throws the ball forward. But uh, finally it comes back. McLeod can't take the mark. Ferguson comes into support, receives the handball. Ran over the boundary line for mine, but uh, boundary umpire was right there on the spot. And finally picked up by Melville Troy. Come back, there's some great tackling down there. And uh, again, umpire Grossman will come in nearer the forward pocket for uh, East Geelong on this occasion. And uh, will put the ball into play. Again, a lot of players... <laughs> He's trying to <laughs> I think, dead I think he, threw it, he thought he was a boundary umpire. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, up by Grossman, that's better. Oh, up in the, oh, that's oh, much not better. Much better I, <laughs> He's well, found a free kick. Well, I suppose that'll get him out of the way, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> Always told you these blokes that know what they're doing, don't <laughs> they? <laughs> the cheaters <laughs> have got the free kick. Pende, oh, goes wide. Ferguson, Ross has to make up a bit of ground. Ferguson put the hands up, couldn't take the mark. Ross over the top. Now Hammer, they ball it up. The umpire will come in and ball it up. Ross played his first game at Thompson. Didn't look too bad. He can't get into the game at all today, can no, he? no. Hasn't seen much of it. Now on Pi Burbis, let's see how he goes with the ball up. Oh, yeah, a bit, better, a bit better than, <laughs> than Grossi. 
Lacino handballs it to Hammer. Great smother by yeah, Scott McLeod. Like, we've had a good duel out on this wing, haven't they? Have. Um, McLeod and uh, yeah. Hammer. Yep. Yeah. Now it'll be a boundary throw in. Between wing and half forward for the Eagles. Northern side of the ground. Boundary throw in. Murray in the middle of a couple, including Hinkley. Free kick over the shoulder. Going to be the Cheaters. Yeah. Free kick. I don't know how he picked that one up. Come in over the no, top, it's going to be a free kick to the Eagles. Yes, oh, right. yeah. Nathan Murray coming in over the back. Hinkley, so it will be Nathan Murray. Goes with the right boot towards half forward. O'Leary, long lead. Oh, great pick up. Sean O'Leary needs a handball. No, he turns back onto his left now onto his right. Goes for home. Right foot kick. Good kick. Oh, no. Good goal. goal number six. Sean O'Leary, great individual effort. And that's the 10th for East Geelong. They go to 10, 10, 70. They lead Geelong West 7, 143. Buckley's Entertainment Centre final quarter scoreboard. A full forwards goal. Oh, excellent, <laughs> excellent goal. Good turn of pace. Was a nice kick actually from Nathan Murray. Kicked it into that. Uh, you know, vacant area there, and uh, Sean O'Leary come out at 100 miles an hour, attacked the ball, trapped it well, spun around and uh, found himself in some space but and kicked it, a nice goal. He turned the defender inside out because the defender would be looking for him to turn on his right foot, yes. turn the other way and straighten up and still kicked off to the right foot. Yep. So that was a good effort. Yep. Excellent goal. Well, back in the middle. Ferguson and Pender. Can they fight back the Cheaters? Only been playing six and a half minutes in the final term. Pender tried to get it down to Hockley. Lacino did well to get it and go towards half forward. Lehman can't take the mark, but he picks it up again, recovers, gets it towards Ross, taps it onto Hockley. He's surrounded. Great little handball to Lacino to Ross. They've been very good at uh, getting goals back, but he goes towards that man again, Damien Williams, who has got leather poisoning at fullback. Takes another mark. He's kicked towards McLeod. Not the best. He goes out wide. McLeod oh, does well to trap it and break free. Good strong play. Little kick got past Melville, but Hockley's there. To uh, gather it, handball towards Hinkley, runs back. Now he's going to be a time on his right foot to uh, measure the pass towards centre half forward. Adam, oh, Williams oh. over the back takes the mark. <laughs> There's a bit of a collision there too with uh, Williams and uh, Williams and Williams collided. Yeah. Actually, it was, was accidental, but uh, my goodness, uh, a golden opportunity here for uh, West Cricket through Andrew Williams. He's uh, 35 metres out, directly in front. In fact, kicked one from here in the second quarter. And I tell you what, has he kicked? No, oh, he's just offline with this one. And uh, that could well be crucial in the context of the final result of this game. Behind to West Cricket and Footy Club on the Buckley's Entertainment Centre scoreboard. West Cricket 7 to 44. They trail East Geelong 10 10 70, eight minutes into the final quarter. Three quarter time at Anarchy. Anarchy 9 8 62. Bell Post till 8 13 61. So a point in it out at Koala Country. Kick in. Came from Steinhaus to Barnett. He goes across the ground to uh, Damien Williams. He goes short and finds Scott McLeod. They're just a possession football out of the uh, back line. Goes to Hodges. He takes the mark. Still inside the defensive 50. And they, they try and drive it forward. Though. There we go. Oh, it's a poor kick in the end, and uh, Damien Pender takes it easily at half forward. Yes, so Pender with the football on centre wing for West Cricket, drives it back into the forward line. Oh, there's uh, Ben Hammer, found himself free on the half forward oh. flank and uh, has taken the mark. What's happening here? Oh, he went to play on, Eric, and he can't go back over his mark. Oh, because it was a mark. So, uh, Hammer, outside 50. Drives the ball to the head of the goal square. That's where it's got to be, and that's where the players are. But, oh, good work there for East. A long handball comes clear. Stefanovski can pick it up. He can't bend down. His teammate can in uh, Chris Barnett, and he drives the ball long to centre wing. Mark almost taken on the fingertips by uh, Hinkley out there, but he can't control it. Ferguson, just with strength, picks it up. Handball to the advantage of uh, Nathan Murray. He kicks it off the ground further forward. Purcell, little tap forward for Murray. He can't bend down and pick it up. He does finally. Handballs it out. Player running for him is, uh, is that Buckingham, Burgers, Buckingham out there. He gets the footy, tries to break the tackle. He can't, but he's over the line anyway. So the ball is out of bounds between oh, about half forward flank in front of the social club here at uh, Richmond Crescent. East Geelong kicking to the eastern end. Nine and a half minutes gone, final quarter. East Geelong 10-10. West Cricket 7-2. Boundary throw in Murray and Pender to the side of the pack. Hammer. Handball was OK. Found Wolf. who takes a bounce along centre wing. Draws a player. Goes back in ball with a right boot. Oh, had to be a good kick. Hinkley made it good. Took a good mark. Under pressure from Steinhaus. He hasn't got a boot on. He hasn't either. <laughs> Just going to be an interesting kick on centre wing. 
goes now, just pops it up. Oh, Evans chops it off, got a high tackle. Yep. And will take a free kick in the middle. Victoria Park, Bannockburn 2013-133. They, they lead the moment lines 8-5, 53. Evans, oh, sets Steinhaus a task. He takes the mark. Was going to go with a handball left, then turns right. Well, a tumbling oh. punt doesn't set it right for the for the forwards, but it might fall for Sean O'Leary. Nah, no, it doesn't. Push. It's a push, yep. and it will be a free kick to Chris Wilkie. So Wilkie takes the ball, sees a player loose out wide is Fratoli, and Fratoli of West Cricket has taken the mark. Plays on quickly. The lead is there from uh, Hockley, and Hockley still uh, half-back flank for uh, the West Cricket footy club side. Looking for some loads further up. Now he uh, kicks the ball over the centre wing from behind Vinnie Lehman. Had his name written all over it, I saw it from here. And in front of our, school, our broadcast position, Vinnie Lehman of West Cricket takes the mark. The okay. lead is further forward. Oh, oh mark dropped there by uh, Wilkie. Should have taken it. Uh, not Wilkie, sorry, that's uh, Wolf. Should have taken it. And, oh, Chris Barnett, as he uh, could almost be penalised there because he uh, could well, have taken the, clear, the mark. He? And uh, from a yard inside the band, we went bang, and he put the ball into Swanson Street. So he certainly was uh, spoiling it. But it's over the boundary line. A couple of minutes from the behind post. 11 minutes gone, final quarter. West Cricket 7 2. They trail East Geelong 10 10. Ball comes in, taken out of the pack by Pender. He, well, he threw it away, yeah. and the umpire right there. The advantage now paid for East Geelong, and away they go. Barnett kicks the ball long to uh, centre wing. Out there is. Uh, his teammate in Hardman, he can't get the footy and uh, away go West Cricket. They uh, intercept well and that was Lucino Sam and the little left foot uh, chip goes to half forward flank. They've chipped it back in looking for it's Hinkley at centre half forward, taking the mark and decides to go and uh, puts it on the boot and has, I think, kicked a goal. Yep. Has kicked yep. the goal. Good well work, Mark Hinkley. Played on and uh, took advantage of the situation. His opponent was on the ground. And has kicked West Cricket's eighth goal. West Cricket and Footy Club, 8 to 50. But they trail East Geelong 10 10 70 on Buckley's Entertainment Centre scoreboard 12 minutes into the final quarter. Yeah, that, well, that was a good play. They won, won the ball out in a disputed decision out there on the wing and uh, brought along the flank and seen the seen uh, Hinkley giving himself an option and two and a half forward, took the mark and had the uh, nouse to realise his opponent was on the ground, Eric, and take him on and run in and kick a goal. Well yes, done. Yes, yes, with good effort. So back in the centre again with uh, umpire Booty. Uh, Grossman oh. it was. Oh, terrible throw up and uh, players didn't get to it. Ferguson just crashed through the pack there, gets the ball to centre half forward, picked up by uh, Melville, and that was Melville Troy, and he's kicked it back to centre wing. Now it stacks on the mill. Finally, uh, West Cricket, well, they thought they were away, but uh, great tackle and the ball in dispute again. Beside the centre circle, and the ball will be thrown up once again. At Goldman Park, where it be 16-11-107. They lead Thompson 11-6-72. Stands out the back from the uh, ruck contest. Gives it to Lacino. Goes wide. Finds Kenyon, who takes the mark on centre wing. Drives it back towards centre half forward. Oh, Stefanoski puts the hand up. Can't take the mark. Goes towards uh, Wolf, who gets a shepherd, but can't pick the footy up. Comes back towards Kenyon again. Stands in the tackle. Tries to get the handball free. Can't do so. He's ripped to the ground by Barnett. And uh, also Hardman, yeah, and it will be a ball up. Hardman. Yep. So another ball up. Cheetahs just into attack. Free kick found. Going to be a hold, and it's going to go to Malcolm Ross for the Cheetahs. Goes towards uh, half forward. The lead on oh, it's a pretty good kick in the end. It might drop and fall for uh, Kenyon. It does. He takes the mark about 45 metres out from goal. Well, they're so. certainly not throwing the towel in, Paul, are they? West no. Cricket, they're battling it right out. And uh, with 14 minutes gone, there's still a chance. So Adam Kenyon goes with a wobbly punt kick and it's through for one behind. So they go to 8-3-51 now, the Cheetahs. And the Eagles are 10-10-70. That's on the Buckley's Entertainment Centre final quarter scoreboard. We've been playing 14 and a half minutes in the final term. It'll be Steinhouse with it at full back. Kicks in short to Barnett. He takes the mark. Uncontested. He goes uh, towards the back pocket and Williams. He takes the mark and plays on. Goes to the right boot towards the uh, centre wing. Murray goes up. Can't take the mark. Off hands. Ross is there. Handball back towards Moreland just on the ground. A kick off the ground by Murray was okay. Goes towards Purcell at half four. Did well. Senjov. Little left foot kick 
Gow goes towards O'Leary, one out with Wilkie, shows his strength and power Ooh. and takes a good mark. And he'd be kicking from 40 metres out. I thought he might have uh, considered 50 there, the umpire. <laughs> Certainly made him earn it, yeah. uh, Paul. So Sean O'Leary, who has kicked six goals this afternoon, kicked eight last week. So he's been in great form up forward. Kicked 31 for the season. This is for goal number 32. And for seven this afternoon, he comes in, kicks. And he's usually pretty good. He doesn't miss a lot, and he yeah. hasn't missed that one. That's yeah, his well seven, seven straight goals this afternoon to Sean O'Leary. And they kick their 11th east along their 11, 10, 76. And they lead Geelong West 8, 3, 51 on the Buckley's Entertainment Centre final quarter scoreboard. Just on the rebound there, they the brought it up on their half forward line. East Geelong's half forward line played in front, Eric. Yeah. They led their players to the ball and played in front. And that and they had the players streaming down the ground into him and of course Sean, kicking up the Sean O'Leary one out, showed his, showed his class and a bit of strength there, got, got himself in front of Wilkie who's done a pretty good job, you know, he's tried very hard Wilkie, you know, I suppose he's lowered his collars when you look at uh, Sean O'Leary's kick seven, but he's tried very hard but he's just a bit strong in that situation His hands are very strong, aren't they? Yeah. Gets himself in front strong. too, that's what yep. I like he likes to play in front Back in the middle Hinkley and Ferguson, Ferguson gets it down towards Manning who uh, gets the handball out somehow. Now Melville, <laughs> that's Troy with a high kick. And Stefanoski and Ross, they can't take the mark. Lehman roves the pack, does well. Handball towards Hinkley, who was standing start, ripped off the football by Hodges. Now Gibson, still in the middle of the ground. Umpire, let's play go on. Now Hockley, in fact it's Burke, who tried to get it past Steinhouse. Hodges across there as well, and also Wolf at half forward now for the Cheaters. Haven't really got a clear possession yet, but they've pushed it towards <laughs> half forward. Yeah. And the players go like nine pins <laughs> yet, and the ball will be a ball <laughs> You're right about not the clean possession either, Jake. You just uh, <laughs> thumped along there, wasn't it? It was. And now it'll be a ball up at half four for the Cheaters. Ferguson taps it over his head towards Manning. Handball towards Buckingham. Kick off the ground was partly smothered, and in fact, it's smothered out of bounds for a throw in at half forward. There's no doubt that, uh, that they've got more value when Ferguson's been on the ball, and, and I think. Uh, Pender's probably tired now and uh, they've got Ross doing a bit of ruck work yep. so Honor's probably on the day almost to Ferguson Yep, for sure, with his strength just with his strength, the boundary throw-ins and even the centre bounces and that, he's won most most taps he's gone for and he's dropped that kick behind the play too and uh, just used his strength in the packs and that So ball uh, forced back over the boundary line at 17 and a half minutes gone final quarter, boundary umpire between centre wing and half forward puts it in, Ross uh, if anything got that tap for uh, West Cricket Cross to uh, Hockley, handball, Melville, tries to find Fratoli and does. Fratoli goes a bit of a circle, hooks it back over the shoulder and oh. Oh, Lehman's uh, dropped another one uh, on the chest and uh, it's Gibson looking for the safety of the boundary and uh, band it fairly comfortably. And I think you know, Lehman would be a bit disappointed with himself today. He's yep. dropped two or three that are, have really been so to marks and uh, put them down. You can't afford that when the players up the field do all the hard work for yeah, you. For sure. So ball between centre wing and half forward flank this time on the outer side of Richmond Crescent. Band round by puts it in. Over the top there is uh, Stefanovski, follows up quickly. Ball uh, under Latino, but finally it comes clear to McLeod. McLeod of East kicks it towards centre wing in front of our broadcast position. High tackle on Costanza. Not seen by the umpire, it was on the blind side of the pack and the ball pushed over the boundary line right in front of our broadcast position here. Out of side, Richmond Crescent. Murray doing the work with, uh, on this occasion, it was Hinkley. Oh, Chino ran straight through uh, McLeod then, but uh, no free kicks at the umpire. And finally he will come in and uh, put the ball in the air. So about 20 players in front of us at the moment. Not too many uh, at each end of the ground. Up it goes. Melville gets it down to uh, Hinkley coming through is uh, Fratoli but uh, in the way there is McLeod grabs it, handballs it forward for East Geelong, picked up there for West, West Cricket and uh, from the hand there of Kenyon it's over the boundary line once again, Joe see if you can clear it from here, I'll try <laughs> boundary throw in Murray gets it towards the side of the pack, Lacuno runs onto it, Nick does well with the right boot. Goes short to Lehman. Put the hand up. Couldn't take the mark. Steinhouse comes out. Can he pick it up? Yes, he can. Handball back towards McLeod. Oh, Kenyon coming at him. He gets it on his right boot. Kicks it up high. Melville has to stand under it. Stefanoski as oh, well. He got a handle yeah. push in the back from Evans on Melville. And Melville will take the free kick at half forward. He made sure that by <laughs> sure, didn't he? <laughs> 
So, Troy Melville, Adam Melville it is. Jeez, there's some loose players up there. Yeah, isn't there it? is. There's not much between, uh, not much space between him and the goals. He goes to the right boot and he just goes as long as he can to the to the uh, top of the square. Steinhaus goes up, can't take the mark. Off hands, gun runs through, can't take the ball with him. Pack develops. The umpire will come in and ball it up. About 15 metres out from the west goal. That anything worries me. That's free kick in front of us. Well, see, so your stage for the free kick fall flat in the ground. The umpire doesn't give it. You're out of the contest. Oh, for sure, well <laughs> out of the contest. From the ruck contest, Melville got it down. Got a uh, the the opposing ruckman hit him in the head too. I think as he came through. Williams handball to Tallarico on the left has missed, and one behind. Two goals, one for him this afternoon, and they go to eight for 52 Geelong West. East Geelong 11, 10, 76. Buckley's Entertainment Centre final quarter scoreboard. 21 minutes played. Williams has cut him right out of the game, Tallarico, hasn't he? Done yeah. a fine job on him. Oh, yeah, excellent job. And got a few possessions himself. You know, he would have taken probably 10 marks, 10 to a dozen marks back there and, and played some good uh, defensive football back Steinhouse there. Steinhouse on the uh, second occasion. He's kicked the ball wide to half-back flank. And what's happened here? The mark was taken by Stefanoski. Yes, umpire's... Uh, Allowed it to stand. He's gone towards centre wing. Mark taken strongly by Gunn in between a couple of players. Gunn now for East. Drives the ball further forward. Over the head there of uh, Senjob. But running onto the footy is uh, Shane Manning. Unfortunately, went without it. And uh, the ball picked up for West Cricket and cleared back to uh, Hockley in the centre of the ground. Hockley to Ross. Ross away he goes for West Cricket. Drives the ball over centre half forward. And in position there. Williams. Good strong mark is uh, Andrew Williams. Not quite as conspicuous since half time, but uh, strong mark there on 50. Looking for some leads up forward. There it comes. Uh, Tallarico's got away, but he can't uh, get the footy, footy clear. And finally, the ball comes clear for East Geelong through Gibson. Goes wide to the outer side and uh, over the boundary line. So at 22 minutes, final quarter. This thing's just about gone out of it now. Buckley's Entertainment Centre scoreboard 11 10 76 East Geelong. Lead West Cricket 8 4 52. And to throw in Murray and Ross. Murray uses his body, taps it over the back to McLeod, tries to run through the pack handball over the top to a vacant centre wing position. Coming through Evans, can't pick it up. And in fact, it was Barnett. Evans is there now with him. Barnett again fighting hard for it in the middle of the ground, and the umpire will ball it up. I think the uh, the heavier ground, it's, like, it's not really heavy, but the bit of moisture is a yeah, few heavy slippery, legs yeah. out there, isn't it? Yeah. So a ball up in the middle of the ground, Murray and Ross. Neither can get an effective tap. Through the middle, Manning. He tries to break free. In there for Tolly as well. Now Troy Melville goes wide, it's okay. Finds Kenyon, can get around Steinhouse, go on the right boot towards half forward. Making up some ground, Burke and also Tallarico there. Great little tap onto Williams. Williams or could have handballed it towards Lakino, yeah. but a great tackle. And that will be a free kick. And Clint Adams it is, I think, with the uh, the tackle and the free kick it was. Handballs it off to Gibson. Gibson goes to the right boot towards half-back. Murray makes up a bit of ground and takes the chest mark just inside the centre, uh, just inside the boundary line. Plays on now, goes towards centre wing. Lead on from Purcell. And Sam Lacchino, who's done a pretty fair job on him yeah, this afternoon. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Taps it away over the boundary line on centre wing for a throw in. So it's 11-10-76 uh, East Geelong, Geelong West 8-4-52. We've been playing 24 minutes in the final term. Don't forget at the conclusion of the match we'll be having the final siren thanks to White Cross Healthcare, a full wrap of the day in football. Boundary throw in to the back of the pack. The Eagles look like they had the numbers there. Held to him. Scott McLean. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> Paul Evans will have to come back with a footy. Umpire Vervis will ball up. Manning it was who... Uh, who had the ball held in. There's a Geelong West player down there as well. I don't know whether he might have got hurt in the tackle. Ross and Murray, they go nearly towards that injured player as well. McLeod's got it on the centre wing. Kicks it over his shoulder towards half forward. Sam Lacano in front again does well. And takes the mark at half back. It's Hinkley it was. Well, oh, well yeah. Yeah, get he's not off. too good and no. the stretch is on. He tried to get up Mark Hinkley. And uh, I think he might have clashed heads with Manning in that tackle a couple of minutes ago. And the stretch is on and he's not too not too healthy. Well, he sort of uh, he tried to get up and run yeah, away and uh, he just yeah. stumbled straight away. Yeah. So 
Not looking good, so there'll be a uh, delay in play here. Hinkley's on the centre wing. It's a bit of a shame at 25 minutes in the last quarter yeah. for, for that to happen, and uh, there's certainly nothing in, in the incident at all. It's nah, just, uh, just a clash a going complete for the Complete accident. Right? Absolutely. Yep. But I think uh, once they get him off, and uh, so it's just you know, a few words being said out there, which is uh, ludicrous, really. Yeah. So, uh, trainers doing a good job there. They're uh, all working pretty well together. Quite a few having a bit to say to uh, Dale Purcell. Sort of at this late stage, I don't know that West have got a lot, great deal to, no. to win out of all this. Well, she have though. Yeah, he just pointed to the scoreboard then, I think. Yes. <laughs> yes. What I mean, they've uh, they've given their all West cricket, and unfortunately. Uh, just hasn't been good enough on the day. They're certainly spending some time uh, with uh, Mark Hinckley, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. So uh, now, you know, over a minute gone, so it'll probably prolong the last quarter fairly well. I, I, going back to the point we're going to make a moment ago, well, she was uh, Lachino holding Purcell pretty well. I think the benefit for East Geelong is the fact that Purcell's been on the ground. Yeah, for um, sure. Since he's come back, obviously, they've started to play much better football. Yeah, and they um, takes a good play to hold him, too. You, yeah. You send your best backman to him, and uh, it frees up Sean O'Leary a bit, too, with him there, yeah. creating space. And well, What I mean, he's know. been prepared to knock the ball on. He hasn't had a million kicks himself, but he's been no. uh, very creative Strong from a team yeah. perspective. Yep, and he'll only get better too as the you know, as oh, week goes right. on. He get his fitness up. So Hinkley is off the ground, and the free kick is, or the mark was taken by Sam Lacino at half back. So he kicks it back towards centre wing, and Murray goes up, can't take the mark off hands. The sun's uh, shining brightly here at Richmond Crescent now this afternoon. You wouldn't tell believe mi it. It's only minus 15. Now. Yeah, you wouldn't believe <laughs> it that it's uh, shining brightly after the day we've had, but it is. And so it's a boundary cool. throw-in on centre wing on the outside, Pender. Will he get a free kick? Yes, he did, and it was paid advantage. Handball to Hockley. Oh, gave it to uh, Melville running past. Nearly hit him in the head. Goes towards centre-half forward. Over the back, Steinhaus. Who stands there? Goes with a torpedo punt towards the outer side. Half-back flank. Now coming through the middle was... Uh, that was Wolf. Goes on the left foot towards Tallarico on the lead. Oh, he runs into his own oh, man, and that was Kenyon. And Kenyon took the grab. About 40 metres out from goal on the boundary line. He's not too... Not too... Uh, sure about the kick. He was going to kick it to the top of the square but the umpires made him bring it back and Obviously we'll kick blown, uh, time, time off. off yep. <coughs> and we'll kick it uh, from the boundary line 40 metres out. So the ball getting back to him now. He's been playing 28 minutes in the final term. We'll go a few extra minutes though the uh, final term now after Mark Hinckley has taken off on a stretcher. Now Kenyon drives it to the top of the square. That's a good kick too. Melville, good mark. Yeah, well that was Adam Melville. He's had a pretty good game this afternoon too. Adam Melville. Made good position there, didn't he? And he will shoot for goal from about 25, 30 metres out directly in front. They haven't given up, West, have they? They just sort of hung in there all day. It was just that uh, spurt in the third quarter that uh, East got, you know, got their nose in front. Yeah, probably the second half, East have uh, effectively controlled the game, haven't they? They've just started to convert on the scoreboard too. They had a lot of the play in that second quarter and couldn't convert. So Adam Melville, going back on the Dennis Lilly run-up, yeah. as everybody does these days, he comes in. And has he brought it around it enough? Yeah, has he stuck so. it in? Well, she's given him the goal, and he's put it through for his first. And that is the uh, ninth for Geelong West. They go to 9-4-58. They trail East Geelong 11-10-76. That is on the Buckley's Entertainment Centre final quarter scoreboard, 29 and a half minutes played. An amazing part now, Paul. Uh, late in the afternoon, they're going to be looking into the western sun. Yeah, <laughs> sure. So that ball about to uh, be delivered back to uh, umpire Booty in the middle of the ground, and the 29 and a half minutes gone final quarter. Wouldn't be a long time to go, but uh, there will be a little extra time through that stoppage. So umpire Booty puts it up once again. Murray gets the tap clear for East Geelong. Comes over the head there of Gunn, picked up by, well, it wasn't picked up. Uh, Nick Latino overran it. Finally, Gunn kicks it off the ground twice, gains 40 metres for the East Geelong side, and finally, oh, well, 
almost should have been uh, penalised then, Hockley. A fantastic tackle. And uh, the tackle has forced the ball to spill clear and over the boundary line for a throw in. Between centre wing and half forward flank on the outer side of Richmond Crescent. Ball comes in. Pender beaten again by Murray. Comes down. Handball. Well, it's gone astray for Roos. Send job. He can't pick it up. Now it comes clear to Gibson up in the forward line at the slope stage. He's kicked it towards centre half forward. And uh, Dale Purcell, I think, uh, holding his ground there. He was just ahead there of uh, Ben Hammer and has been given the free kick for being uh, manhandled. And uh, I'd suggest probably, well, she uh, being at centre half forward, I can say, would have a go. But uh, no. sees the lead from Sean O'Leary, who's kicked seven. The opportunity to kick eight two weeks in a row, and uh, that doesn't happen too often, I suppose. The siren now. So the siren has sounded. So, so it's uh, 30 minutes. Sean O'Leary now. He moves in and uh, has hooked it. And uh, the behind, the behind will stand. So that's the final score on the Buckley's Entertainment Centre scoreboard. East Geelong 11 11 77 have defeated Geelong West Cricket and Football Club 9 for 58 and that will be the final score at Richmond Crescent. In the final term East Geelong kicked uh, two goals one while Geelong West kicked two goals three. The goal kickers for the Eagles this afternoon seven to Sean O'Leary and singles to Shane Manning, Scott McLeod, Dale Purcell and Scott Gibson while for Geelong West two to Glenn Tellerico and singles to Adam Melville, Vinnie Lehman, Mark Hinckley Andrew Williams, Damian Pender, Ben Hammer and Adam Kenyon. But in the end it was a 19 point win to East Geelong. Their second victory of the season and consecutive victories for them. They defeated the Belmont Lions last week and this week they've defeated the, the Cheetahs 11-11-77 to Geelong West 9 for 58 We'll take a break. When we come back we'll have the final siren thanks to White Cross Healthcare. We'll have a full wrap of this game. We'll have our Carrington Hotel Player of the Day for our 3 2 and one Best Player on the Ground. We'll also have a full wrap of Round 7 of the GDFL. We'll have a look at uh, some games from the Ballerine and the GFL. We'll also have a look at the game at the MCG between Collingwood and St Kilda this afternoon in Round 8 or 9 of AFL football. I can't keep up with that. I think it's Round 9 of uh, AFL football this afternoon. That and plenty more ahead, including uh, Marty Ianelli and Dale Purcell. And our special guest also, who will tell you who it is after the break, on uh, Geelong Radio 100.3 FM, your home of local football.